Can you believe this is an airplane? It's an Emirates A380 and this is first class. No airline has done more with the Airbus A380 Super Jumbo, the biggest commercial jet in the sky than Emirates. But does it still live up to the hype? We spent 25 hours traveling halfway around the planet, putting the world's most over-the-top first class to the test. This is first class as only Emirates can do it. The finest champagne, your personal bed in the sky, a shower on the plane, a lounge as big as an airport. Join us for two incredible flights on board the world's biggest airplane, a visit to one of the world's best lounges, and one of the most magnificent aviation experiences available today. Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from greenergrass.com. Right now I'm in Cairo. It's time to head back to JFK to New York. I'm traveling with Emirates in not one, but two A380s and in first class. I mean, this is gonna be pretty epic. Let's get started. Traveling the 8,352 miles between these two cities will take some time, especially because we're backtracking to Dubai. We also intentionally scheduled a layover of nearly eight hours to take full advantage of as much as we could in Dubai. There were shorter options, but we wanted to make this last as long as possible. Plus, our long trip, the 13 hours to New York, will be entirely in daylight, maximizing the A380 first class experience. This is the final leg of our newlywed world tour after all, so we had to do it right. Back in Cairo, Emirates offers a nearly 10,000 square foot lounge. Many of the airlines' outstations have lounges like this one, but none can compare with the one you'll see when we get to Dubai. Now, if you're looking for a glass of champagne to toast your upcoming A380 journey out of Cairo, you'll have to wait until you're on board. As nice as this lounge is, it lacks two things, views of the ramp and alcohol. With boarding time approaching, we headed that way. You ready to board this bird? I really don't want our honeymoon to be over, but Mm, this is one way to get home. Emirates first class won't suck, will it? Oh, can I say that? <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to say that. Sorry, I'll delete that. <laughs> the massive size of the Airbus A380 means tons of passenger conveniences, but it also spells trouble for airports. Special taxiways, runways, and gates had to be built to accommodate the super jumbo. Cairo has two gates capable of serving A380s. Because Emirates' first-class cabin is upstairs on their A380s, we headed up an escalator to a gate area reserved for passengers sitting on the upper deck of the airplane. And now we wait. Let's take just a second to get familiar with the layout of the A380. There are several versions out there, but the one we'll spend most of our time on has 399 economy seats on the lower floor. Upstairs, there's a bar at the back, and there's 76 business class seats covering most of the top floor. But at the very front, at the very front, you'll find 14 first class seats. So, let's go check them out. After a short walk down the jet bridge, we were inside the stuff of dreams. Now, I've seen this cabin hundreds of times in YouTube videos and thousands of times in pictures, but to actually see it in person, it was next level. Is it gaudy? Yeah, you bet. Is it ostentatious? Sure, it is. Is it over the top? Without a doubt. But were we impressed? 110%. We sat in the middle seats for this shorter three hour leg over to Dubai. I recommend not raising the partition between the two seats if you're sitting next to your new wife. The A380 is a special plane, and these seats have a lot going on. We'll explore them in more depth on the next longer daytime flight to New York. Once you get moving, flight time to Dubai is uh, just under three hours. It's going to take us over Sinai, and then we're just going to dip across Saudi, and come over Bahrain, and drop down into Dubai. There's nothing else in commercial aviation quite like taking off in an A380. It offers such a smooth transition to the sky, and I hope every aviation enthusiast gets to have this experience at least once. The tray table, which is roughly the size of a Volkswagen, is sturdy. Our short flight time meant we did not get the amenities like pajamas and slippers we'll see on the next flight, but it also did not mean Emirates skimped on the menu. By the way, all of the menus, including the lounge menu, are available at greenergrass.com menus.
I went for the broccoli soup, which I followed with a chicken makhbous. Both were tasty. But again, this was a short, practically a regional flight. So before we knew it, we were on our final approach into Dubai, where one of the greatest lounges on the planet was calling our name. When we stepped onto the jet bridge, an Emirates employee was waiting for us with our names on a sign. We were whisked onto a golf cart and taken directly to security. We then had a short walk to the lounge. Is travel back? You tell me. And it was time for Emirates First Class Lounge. Despite the late hour, we were way too amped up to just go to bed. So we decided to share some food and have a nightcap. I had a sushi appetizer and I forgot to get footage. So here's the empty plate of sushi. Sushi and a burger in the Dubai airport. Airport time. Eat whatever you want, whenever you want. The sushi and burger were good, but we'd hit a wall and the nap rooms were full. So we spent about $150 on a room at the transit hotel upstairs. It was worth it. We were pooped. Okay, so it's uh, 3.20 in the morning and we're calling it. So this is the uh, transit hotel in Dubai. These post-security hotels are incredibly useful to weary travelers like us. I wish there were more in the U.S. I'm a little groggy and sleepy and weirdo. I guess that was, how long were we asleep? Maybe three hours. Three hours of sleep and uh, we've been delayed by, uh, by about an hour, but uh, that's okay. So we're up, we're gonna go get some coffee, I hope, right? Okay, we're gonna go get some coffee, probably in a lounge, and uh, try to reacclimate. So let's head down there and get this day started. We made the short commute to the lounge and headed straight to the a la carte restaurant where we figured we had the most direct and fastest access to caffeine. With the benefit of sunlight, three hours of sleep, and especially that espresso, the true glory of this lounge shined through. Utterly incredible. It has practically everything. So we've been in Dubai airport for about seven hours now. Impressions, thoughts, lounge uh, rating. Well, I reserved the lounge rating for the Jeb score, so nice try. First class passengers can also receive a 15 minute treatment in the spa in the lounge. We didn't take advantage of that, but you certainly could. This is such an impressive airline, so I just overheard a manager uh, speaking. Yesterday in this lounge, they had four African presidents in here, so they had to handle the VIP, you know, presence of four presidents. That's incredible. Emirates. I bet if you're a president, you get an escort or two when it comes time for boarding, but we were on our own. No problem, though. So how cool is this? We're going to be boarding from just right over there, like almost from the lounge, right from the, um, from the same level. This is really cool. Boarding U.S.-bound flights from Dubai requires some additional security screening, which slowed us down a bit, but we still managed to board in plenty of time. That was about a 30-second walk from the lounge to the gate. Is it just me, or don't you wish more jet bridges had windows? But there is a pretty massive trade-off. These spaces are tough to keep cool even without glass. These views come at a cost. Of course, the interior of this A380 was the same we'd seen the night before, but it really seemed to shine in the daylight. There's so much to take in here in Emirates First Class, and we'll have time to explore it all before we get to New York. 13 hours from now.
Shortly before departure, flight attendants asked us when we'd like to make our 30-minute shower spa reservations. It's still crazy to think that's something you can do on a plane, but it is here. I booked mine up for about an hour before landing. Emirates is largely a long-haul airline, and their fleet matches those requirements. That 777 right there is an important part of the airline, but it's the A380s like this one that serve as the flagship. It's not hard to make the argument that the A380 wouldn't even exist without Emirates. The airline has ordered 123 of them. The next biggest operator, Singapore, only ordered 24. And this first-class experience we're about to embark on is an important part of the image that Emirates wants to convey to the world. So let's see whether it lives up to the promise. But first, let's get in the sky. The seat is not only large, but also very well designed for long haul travel. Everything is readily accessible. It's really kind of like a cocoon. It's hard not to feel comfortable in here. I was particularly impressed with the size and clarity of the screen. It was well designed for this space. There's also a touch screen right here that allows you to control pretty much everything. But the best part, of course, is the view. There's room in front of the seat to store carry-on bags, including the one the flight attendant gave us uh, to hold all the amenities that you're gonna get in this flight. There's a drawer here that contains a writing pad and pen, a vanity mirror with creams and perfumes and all kinds of stuff. There's more storage down here. There are also plenty of buttons to call flight attendants, adjust the seat, or even open up your personal mini bar. There's a universal plug and a USB-A charger here. There's more storage and buttons here. There's a life vest, which hopefully goes unused. In addition to that larger screen, there's also this smaller handheld remote. Now, of course, the doors close and they provide a lot of privacy, but not as much as you get on Emirates' newer first class on their 777s. I'll link to my video about that in the description below. You won't go hungry on Emirates First Class. As a harbinger of things to come, here's a snack basket, the first of many. Look, if you're in first class, you shouldn't have to fuss with closing a window shade when the job can be handled by a button. And you're not gonna leave Emirates First Class empty-handed. You'll get a set of pajamas. There's also this very luxurious amenity kit, which is filled with even more concoctions and elixirs. Oh, and here's a closer look at what was in that desk. I went to visit Suzanne, who, I'm sorry to say, found a couple of problems with her seat. This piece was loose, and her touchscreen controller wasn't working, but a flight attendant brought a new one around really quickly, and it worked just fine. She changed into her pajamas, which she said were quite comfortable. A little while later, I decided to order some more breakfast. The menu for this trip was 15 pages long, including the extensive wine list. Again, if you'd like to see it all, head over to greenergrass.com slash menus. I had the eggless vegetable frittata, which was okay. There was not a lot of flavor to it, but I guess that's to be expected with something called eggless. The fruit was really good, though. The internet was blazing fast. We'd been running for a while on adrenaline, airline food, and sheer willpower. So as we flew over Iran, it was time to attempt a nap. Now the bed is massive. Suzanne had no trouble falling asleep. I gave it a test too. I had plenty of room despite being, uh, shall we say, larger than Suzanne. But I couldn't sleep. I just had way too much adrenaline. So I watched the world go by. And thanks to this IFE, the time passed almost too quickly. It has maps and cameras and entertainment. It offers plenty of choices, a massive screen, and it's easy to use. It's absolutely class leading. After a few hours, I decided it was time for a snack. So I asked for the beef poke bowl. 
It was great. It was a really nice, light, but filling snack. Also something a little different, something you don't usually see in an airline's menu, which I think is a real plus. Thanks to the strength of the internet access on board, I stayed in touch with many of you on the ground during this trip. I was particularly grateful to those of you who tracked our progress using Twitter or Instagram. But by this time, I was ready to stretch my legs a little bit, so I headed forward. At the front of the cabin, you'll naturally find even more snacks. Downstairs, you get a sense of what the economy seating looks like. Soon, Suzanne woke up and we decided to head back to the bar, which is located at the back of the upper deck. I simply cannot believe this is on a plane, but you ain't seen nothing yet. The drinks on offer here are different than the ones in first class, so when we, the flight attendants found out we were heading back here, they offered to send some different drinks back for us. We passed. Now, someone will need to fact check me on this, but I think Emirates might offer more snacks per capita than any other airline. There were even more back here. Is this the bar with the best view in the world? Uh, anyway, the A380's wings have a surface area of more than 9,000 square feet. That's almost as big as the Emirates Lounge in Cairo. Business class seating is between the bar and the first class cabin, and business class on the Emirates A380 looks really comfortable. I can't wait to try it. I have not done, done that yet. Several more hours passed, and I watched some more movies, and I was eventually ready for a big meal. Now, because of the time, I really don't know what I was having here. I don't know if this was lunch or dinner, but it, it didn't matter. I knew it was gonna be really good because caviar is always a great way to start any meal. And what's wrong with following that with some meze? Always a highlight on any Emirates flight. Call me crazy, but when I saw the chicken biryani on the menu, I got excited. Unfortunately, when I ordered it, they'd run out. So I opted for the beef tenderloin. Now the last thing in the world I want to do here is complain. This whole thing is completely crazy. But in my quest for honesty, it was a little more dry than I'd like. But it's tough to get steak right on a plane. And it's still steak on a plane. Suzanne also ordered the chicken biryani and got the salmon instead. She said it was very fresh. Emirates First Class offers dine-on-demand service, which means we were served uh, whenever we wanted, whatever we wanted. Now, each time it took no more than 20 minutes to get our food, and I can't imagine how much work this is for the cabin crew. Ours were fantastic. After dinner or lunch, it was finally time for one of the most incredible things any aviation enthusiast can do. I was taking a shower at 38,000 feet. This has to be one of the most indulgent things anybody can do. This bathroom is massive and beautifully appointed. Also, I didn't know this, the, the floor, it, it's heated. The space at the front of the top floor of the A380 is a tough one to fill, it's just an awkward geometry. Etihad tried their residence, other airlines have put lounges up here, but Emirates went over the top. This is the largest bathroom on any commercial airplane. Each first class passenger gets up to 30 minutes in here and five minutes of water. Now both Suzanne and I found it to be plenty of time in here. Is it necessary? Of course not. But it was a new experience, hopping off of a 13-hour flight, feeling fresh and ready to go. And as you leave, would you believe it? More snacks. Fresh fruit this time. But sadly, the experience was drawing to a close. So that means it's time for the Jeb score. In this tongue-in-cheek rating system, we'll look at the lounge, the seats, the food, the in-flight entertainment, and the service. First, the lounges were both impressive. There's no doubt, of course, that the lounge in Dubai was better than the one in Cairo, which you'd expect, but both were impressive. These are the definition of five-star lounges. The seats are impressive, too. I have to say, I prefer the fully enclosed suite on the 777s to this one. Uh, this is just a little bit more ostentatious than that, but this is roomy and comfortable. Uh, seat Guru notes that the seat I was in, 4K, is questionable because of the proximity to the galley. That might be bothersome to some passengers. It was not to me. I didn't even notice it, really. Five stars here. The food was abundant and tasty. That said, when I compare the food I had here with my recent Air France La Première flight, it just wasn't quite as good. I'm 
sorry not to have gotten my first choice for the main meal, and some of the dishes weren't as flavorful as I would have liked. That said, there was still plenty of food, and it was first class. The certs, four stars. The in-flight entertainment is some of the best in the world. Uh, I was impressed with the screen, the choices, the ease of use, five stars here. Finally, the service. It was exactly what you'd expect first class service to be. Present, but not in your face. In other words, cabin crew was always there when I needed something, but they didn't hover unnecessarily. It was simply true first class service, five stars. So that leaves Emirates A380 service from Cairo to JFK via Dubai with 24 out of a possible 25 stars. Almost perfect, but not quite there. As always, what do you think? Let us know in the comments below, and between now and the next time, see you in the sky. <laughs>